What is XRF, how does it work, and what is it used for? X-ray fluorescence, or XRF, is a reliable method for determining the elemental makeup of any material, as well as determining the quantity of each material. Modern XRF instruments are easy to use, are non-destructive, and can measure a material with little to no sample prep. This makes XRF a preferred analysis method for a great number of industries, including mining, petrochemical, metals, cement, food and beverage, and R&D. An XRF experiment begins by irradiating a sample material with X-rays from an X-ray source. Every material is made up of many atoms, and each atom has a positively charged nucleus surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged electrons. The electrons orbit the nucleus on distinct energy levels or shells. When X-rays encounter an atom, they are absorbed by the electrons orbiting the nucleus. If the energy from an incoming X-ray is high enough, the electron receiving the X-ray will be released from the atom. An empty electron spot close to the nucleus is not a stable state for an atom, so it will pull an electron from a farther away shell to fill that spot. When this happens, a new X-ray is emitted as an X-ray fluorescence photon, which is unique for each element. The energy shells from an atom are named alphabetically, with the closest ring being K, then L, M, and so on. This atomic structure is described by the familiar Bohr model. The photons emitted from these shells were originally described in a notation by a physicist named Carl Mane Siegbahn. Appropriately, this is known today as the Siegbahn notation. So when you hear the characteristic lines of elements referred to as K lines and L lines, or K alpha and K beta, you now understand that it all refers back to these two models. By applying the Siegbahn notation, we stated earlier that XRF can not only determine which elements are in the material, but also determine the quantity. The key factors to measuring the fluorescence relies on a careful balance between the instrument's power, sensitivity, and the ability to resolve the data. Each element emits a unique fluorescence. There are two techniques used to separate and identify these energies. The first method is known as energy dispersive, or EDXRF. The spectral resolution in EDXRF is achieved by the quality of the detector. These detectors have several thousand channels to simultaneously measure the entire spectrum coming off the sample. The more channels, the better the resolution. Because all radiation from the sample is collected directly after the sample, the power of these systems can be lower. This makes EDXRF perfect for benchtop systems and low-intensity setups like microXRF or handheld XRF. In wavelength dispersive or WD XRF techniques, Bragg's law is applied to determine at what angle these characteristic X-rays will be located. Filters are used to improve the background of spectral results, collimators are used to make a parallel beam coming off the sample, and crystals with known lattice parameters separate the wavelength related to an element of interest. The detector is positioned at 2 theta to measure the specific elemental wavelength. Placing all of these components between the signal coming off the sample and the detector comes at a cost. The intensity reaching the detector is diminished significantly. Therefore, WDXRF X-ray sources must be much more powerful. WDXRF usually has better resolution than EDXRF, especially for the most common elements, which is mostly needed for advanced applications. Due to the higher power, WDXRF is also capable of measuring light elements that naturally have very low fluorescence yield and cannot be easily detected using EDXRF. But remember, EDXRF systems have far fewer components and lower power requirements. So if you're looking for a fast, broad, and less expensive way to determine the elemental makeup of your sample, EDXRF provides an ideal solution. So how do we get from detecting the elements from the spectrum to quantifying them? XRF spectrometers not only determine the presence of elements, but also the amount of them in a sample. This happens by setting up a calibration. Standards with known concentrations of a material, for example, cement, are measured and the intensity is plotted versus the concentration. A regression curve is fitted and thanks to modern software can be optimized to improve the calibration. When an unknown cement sample is measured, the intensity is compared to the calibration curve of the standard. This sort of calibration can be set up for a wide variety of materials like petroleums, polymers, metals, and so on. Modern systems offer semi-quantitative solutions, which can analyze the material without those standards. In other words, they're standardless methods. XRF is a versatile solution that can analyze any material, from solids to liquids, loose powders, or pressed powders. For most elements, XRF's analytical dynamic range is from parts per million to 
And thanks to WD and EDXRF techniques, these instruments are suitable for an increasingly wider range of applications and budgets.